Let's get into the next type of factoring, factor by grouping. We're going to be using ideas that we used when we were factoring using the GCF. Here is our first example, x times this quantity y minus 2 plus 3 times the quantity y minus 2. When we look at this, I want you to see that we have two terms. Remember that terms are separated by adds and subtracts. But this subtract and this subtract, if it's inside parentheses, it does not count as separating terms. So we have really just two big terms here. And we're thinking about what is a common factor. In this first term, we have two factors. We have x as the first factor. And y minus 2 in parentheses is the second factor. And remember, when it's in parentheses, we're thinking of it as just a factor, a building block. We're not going to try to separate this y and the negative 2. It is one factor. OK, this term back here also has two factors, has a positive 3, and it has this quantity y minus 2. So we can see there is a common factor. It's this quantity in parentheses, y minus 2. That's our greatest common factor, the GCF. GCF, of course, goes out in front of parentheses. We set up a new set of parentheses with the leftover terms going in parentheses. So left over from the first term, we have an x. Left over from the second term is a positive 3. And there's our answer. It's in factored form. And this is how we want to handle problems like this, where we see two big terms. And we can see that in each term, there is a matching quantity in parentheses. And we're going to identify that in parentheses as the GCF and put it out front. And in the second set of parentheses, drop in what's left over. Left over from the first term was the x. Left over from the second term was that positive 3. And that's all there is to that kind of a problem. So here's a quick one for you to try. I know you're ready for it. So it's going to be just like the problem we had right before it. If you want to pause and, and go back to the beginning of that example just to take another look at it, please, by all means, do that. And then come here and, and pause the video, work this problem out, and then come back and we'll look at the answer. Okay, so both terms here have the quantity 3y minus 7. That's our first factor in, in the solution. And then we have 2x minus 9, and those terms go into the second factor. So this is how this expression is written in factored form. Here's our next example. It's a problem that looks similar to the, pr the previous problem. We have two big terms. We start off with 2x times the quantity y minus 3. The second term is a positive 5 times the quantity 3 minus y. When we need to factor an expression that looks like this, we are looking at these two terms and we're focusing on the quantities in the parentheses because if they are the same then that's going to be our GCF that will bring out front so looking at on the left side we have y minus 3 but on the right side it's 3 minus y they don't look identical they ha they both have some kind of a y and a 3 going on there but we need to decide are they really the same or perhaps they are opposites if they're opposites there's still a way for us to do factoring. So it's important for us to, when we're looking at those expressions in parentheses, hopefully they are identical. If they're not identical, maybe they are opposites. And there's an extra step if they are opposites. So to really decide if they're opposites, each term that we have in parentheses here, we need to see the opposite term in parentheses back here. So over here, we have a positive y in parentheses in the first term. In the second term, here it's a negative y, so they are opposites. What about the threes? In the first set of parentheses, it's a negative three, but back here it's a positive three. So each term that we see here, we have its opposites in the set of parentheses in the second term. So that is telling us that these two quantities are opposites. Now, think back to GCF. Did we have a uh, a move we could do to change the sign of the terms that were in parentheses. You maybe remember, maybe it's it's a little foggy. The move that we could do would be instead of factoring out as a GCF a positive 5, 
let's make it a negative 5. If we are changing the sign of our GCF, that's how we can change the sign of the terms that are in parentheses. So we've changed that positive 3 into a negative 3. We changed the negative y into a positive y. And the reason we could do that is because we changed the GCF from a positive 5 to a negative 5. So we had to flip signs of each of these terms, the GCF and also the terms that were in the parentheses. Now, if we look at what we have in parentheses from the first term, they're still not identical, but do they match? Here it's a positive y, and there it's a positive y, and the negative threes match. So they are equivalent, and all we want to do is just rearrange terms. And we don't have to flip signs when we rearrange terms. We just look at this negative three and say, as long as that stays negative three, we're OK. And that's a positive y, so it should stay a positive y, we're OK. So now look at this line, a negative 5 times quantity y minus 3. And this line, 2x times quantity y minus 3. Now we're seeing those quantities in parentheses, they match up exactly. They are the GCF. Let's put it out front. Open up a new set of parentheses. And what goes in there? The leftovers. Leftover from the first term, 2x. Leftover from the second term, negative 5. So we have 2x minus 5 in the second set of parentheses. And that's our answer. We have this in factored form. Here's a problem for you to try. So if you don't already have some paper in, in front of you with a pen or a pencil, go and, and get that. You should be working along. That's going to be more helpful to you than just checking it out and hearing me. So here's a problem for you to do. Put the video on pause, take a few minutes and work it out. Come back and we'll look at the answer. OK, so what I had to do was to make these quantities in parentheses match up, we had to flip some signs because we had opposites. So the 2 minus y became y minus 2 because our GCF was also flipped from negative 3 to positive 3. That matched up our quantities in parentheses. So we have the y minus 2. The second set of parentheses contains what was left over, the x from the first term, the positive 3 from the second term.